So I've been riding Meeple's new city rider for three weeks now. And holy <laughs> guys, I think I'm in love. Look what I got for you. I feel like I haven't seen my other boards ever since. <laughs> Why will he ride us Shh. <laughs> I know most of you know me as the budget YouTuber guy, but not this time. I'm rolling in style. Bell driven by double kingpins, baby. So the city rider three, what some out there are calling the baby hurricane. But trust me, there's nothing baby about this board. It's actually the most grown up I've ever felt riding an electric skateboard. Yes, there's some things I had to learn to overcome, but so far, all the amazing positives have been outweighing the little negatives, making this my daily rider. Meeple sent me this board free of charge for a review, but this video is based on my personal experience and opinion, so please stick around to the end to see if this is the right board for you. Let's get started. So you're not really getting an electric skateboard here. It's more like a personal electric vehicle. From the size, the weight, and heavy duty build, it definitely creates a more luxurious riding experience than I'm used to, but I'm loving it. The City Rider 3 is true to its name. These 150mm airless tires crush through any city imperfections without missing a beat. Cracks, bumps, potholes, grass, dirt, you name it, these wheels will allow you to trample with ease. Due to its perforated design, the rubber is able to bend molding to most road surfaces. It's a surreal feeling going at high speeds through cracks that I normally have to reduce my speed and adjust my body to get through safely. These tires are mounted on a heavy duty plastic hub, which adds a nice balance of mushy and stable. Overall, I'm really enjoying the comfort that these wheels provide through different terrains and couldn't be happier. You know, as I was filming my buddy Skylar carving ahead of me, the sound of the tires gliding through the pavement sounded like ice skates gliding through ice. Sharp, but with precision. By the way, I did a quick interview with Skylar about his riding experience on the City Rider 3. So make sure to keep watching. Let the bass kick. Let the, let the bass, let the bass kick. Let the, let the bass, let the bass kick. Let the, let the bass, let the bass kick. Let the bass, let the bass kick. These tires aren't the only things that stick out from this ride. They're held by two heavy duty kingpin trucks that definitely challenged my riding style and abilities compared to my other long deck hub boards. These DKP trucks are tight and secure enough to keep you stable at high speeds but they can also carve you on a dime, which I enjoy, but the intensity of the carve is something I'm still trying to get used to. These trucks distribute the weight of the board and the rider into four jelly joints, the bushings, to create a more dynamic riding experience. I'm sure more technical things can be said about them, but I'm not an expert on trucks. But from my regular guy observation, I see that it performs more like a 4x4 off-road Jeep than a 1997 Honda Civic. Very nimbly yet stable. I feel nothing. I feel nothing. Look at this high curb right here. Look at this thing. Do you see what I mean? Like no feelings. Fuck. These double kingpins are attached to a 36 inch deck, which catches the eye with its bold design. Cut with some curves and personality, and concaved edges which is something I love considering I ride on the edges of the deck. 
It helps with stability and maneuver the board's direction. The deck is sandblasted versus traditional grip tape, which allows companies to get creative and create some really neat designs that showcase the actual wood patterns of the deck. We'll see how it remains in place for the longevity of the board, but so far so grippy. Even though the battery and speed controllers take the majority of the undercarriage, it still has some bend to it. Probably coming from the trucks, which is okay considering the wheels and double kingpins help with the weight absorption. Onto these belt motors, they are the 6374 models. I'm not exactly sure on the wattage, but I'm assuming it's similar to the Meeple Flow, the 2800s. I can't speak much on these belts and pulleys since I wouldn't know what to compare them to, but the combination adds a lot of torque to this board. Another thing I'm still trying to gauge, getting pulled back from a dead stop. There's a lot of G's going through my body that I'm not used to. But that could also be because belt driven boards have an overall better torque than hub boards. Meepo advertises a max speed of 30 miles per hour, and I'm pleased to say it's a true 30 miles per hour. It feels agile and quick enough to keep up and overtake city traffic with ease. And also the larger build gives you more security while being surrounded by cars. The battery is encased at the bottom with the speed controllers and all the other components. This massive 12S3P battery is made out of Molecel P42A cells, which gives you an advertised 22 mile range. I've been super pleased with this battery as it gives me plenty of charges for small trips or allows me to cruise for longer periods with the electric buds. The battery charges quite fast thanks to this also massive power supply. I'll let you know in the future videos how the battery's holding up, but so far so good. I'm stoked with the range that I get from this board. Onto the brains of the operation, the speed controllers. Meeple's signature Li FOCs. How do you, I don't know how, I'm not sure how to say it. It might be like Li fucks, but I doubt it. I was hoping that it would have the new Hobbywing speed controllers like the Meepo Flow, but I don't know exactly what I'm missing out, so I can't speak on it. According to the site, it's smarter and more precise. But after speaking with eBoarder, he confirmed that it's smoother than the Li FOCs. By the way, if you have any serious questions about the ins and outs of some of these components, you can contact eBoarder on all socials. The dude is hella knowledgeable and super supportive of the community. As a longtime user of Li FOCs and M4S remotes, I'm used to how they perform, so I've been pleased with the combo so far. But let's change sceneries a little. I'm gonna change out of these clothes while I leave you guys with that Skylar interview that I was talking about, and we'll head outside and talk about some of the things that piss me off about this board. See you guys soon. I just rode um, with my boy Skylar. It was his first time riding the City Rider 3, or a belt board for that matter, correct? First time riding a belt board too, yeah. So what do you think? Never had, never been more than like a couple inches off the floor, yeah. It's it's nuts hitting these big old fat cracks and just... You don't feel it, it's these airless tires. I mean, you don't get flats, which is awesome too. And the long board has a little curvature as well, so that like just sucks all of it up as well. You're talking about the shape of the deck? The shape of the deck, the length of the deck, because I'm used to a short deck, but just having a long deck, when you hit these big cracks or these bumps even, it's like, you, it's, it absorbs it all. You don't even feel it. But the double kingpin also probably makes sense for the super sharp turning radius. Yeah. Like just, so carving do, on it is completely different completely than the other. Completely different than my board. And I have really loose trucks on my, uh, on my Mini, and it's a different type of carve, but you can still be going 15, 20 miles an hour, and you can just, you could totally cut it sideways. You were the only one that took this board up a hill like this. I still haven't rode a hill like this. So how was it? Did it handle well? It, it, I just went full throttle and I would say, I mean, it's a pretty good grade hill here. And I, I look, I noticed I was going 17 miles an hour up the whole thing. And it's a consistent grade hill too. It goes on for like maybe quarter of a mile. And I it don't stayed. Know. Yeah, it kept up. Like uh, my mini definitely would... <laughs> would die out halfway up this and I'd stop and have to turn around and come down or walk it up. But yeah, it, it kept going. I could have kept going. It felt really good. And then coming around and coming back down felt so good. Carving. 
specifically, it felt really good carving down this hill. And the belt driven, the torque is a lot different too. I could really feel it. The braking and the gas really, it takes off quick. And I, I also love that double kingpin so much. Coming down this hill right here and carving left and right, it feels like snowboarding, to be honest. I, I snowboard yeah. all the time and it's like, when I'm, when I'm snowboarding, I love just being able to jack the board sideways and then kick it back the opposite direction sideways. You're it's able like, to whip it. It feels like that. Yeah, you know, you're still going fast. So you kick it one way, you can kick it right back. And you don't feel like you're going to get speed wobbles or anything. How's the brake on it? Brake felt pretty good. Going down here, I did yank it once. I And I more so slowed down. I didn't fully stop on a dime, but... I wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect that coming down fast down a hill anyway. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of weight too coming down behind those brakes. Yeah, plus of my my fat. <laughs> All right, well, Skyler, I appreciate your time you coming out here and sorry people about the noise. We probably picked the worst place right at an intersection, <laughs> but I don't give a f because this is about the City Rider 3 and it's a board that will be in a city environment at all times. Yeah. Or maybe not because you can take this in the fields of Iowa and have a great time. I'd like to ride out there. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I said it from the beginning, you know, I live in an apartment and it's a pain in the ass to carry this thing around sometimes. It'd be great if I had a garage that I could just ride out of. Um, but, you know, for, for group rides, I feel like this board is so good for group rides. It has the perfect speed and it just looks good too, you know? It's like you, you, you looks like you know what you're doing. You're not showing up there with your tiny little Meeple Mini and, and hoping it all goes right. So size and portability, eh. So this board carves beautifully, but the turning radius on it sucks. I mean, as you would expect, all together is 43 inches measuring from end of the wheel all the way to the back bracket of the motor. So it's a big device. That's why I don't think I would call it an electric skateboard, more like a personal electric vehicle. You know, too many times now, it happened that I almost ran people over on sidewalks. Like this has never happened before, but I'll be going and someone is turning into my street and it's just, you know, big enough to cause a lot of damage to someone. So I have to be very careful with this thing. So carrying is difficult, but just standing your board anywhere is nearly impossible. Here, so I mean, down front trucks, against the wall in your house, eh, eh? This is how you probably try to place the board, but it would just fall on you. Okay, so I'll lean a little bit out, like that, it should be good. Uh, uh. Maybe play a balance game, but nah, most likely it's just gonna slip down. Oh, no, impossible. It's impossible. The only way is just flatten the ground or, you know, put up like this so it doesn't take too much space, maybe under your couch. So this board carves beautifully, but the turning radius on it sucks. I mean, as you would expect, all together is 43 inches measuring from end of the wheel all the way to the back bracket of the motor. So it's a big device. That's why I don't think I would call it an electric skateboard, more like a personal electric vehicle. You know, too many times now, it happened that I almost ran people over on sidewalks. Like this has never happened before, but I'll be going and someone is turning into my street and it's just, you know, big enough to cause a lot of damage to someone. So I have to be very careful with this thing. So that is all guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this is enough to help you make your decision out there with the City Rider 3. And if you enjoy this video, please drop a like. A lot of work went into this, not just in my part. Skylar, I appreciate you taking time before work. Spencer, taking time after work to go film really late downtown. Really appreciate it. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys next time. Peace out.